This is Love Johar Sincere. Thanks to all of you who have subscribed to my YouTube channel and thanks for watching my YouTube videos. For all of you out there who are trying to learn and study about ISO 27001 and want to implement information security management system within your organizations in the future, all of you are requested to subscribe to my channel because you will find all this information that I am sharing over here very useful. So I still remember the time when I started my study of ISO 27001 and ISMS around a couple of years ago. So I wasn't aware about what this uh, all is about. I mean, I wasn't sure what exactly do we mean by ISO 27001. I wasn't sure about what exactly do we mean by ISMS. So these, these, these terms were kind of not familiar to me at that time. But then I decided that as soon as I will learn anything new in this particular field and in this particular security sector, I will share the same with all of you out there so that you do not have to search everything on Google and find the small answers that you are looking for uh, in front of uh, you know Google so, so, so that all of you can uh, actually come to a place where you can find all your answers for ISO 27001 and that's why I have basically created this channel. So let's get started in this particular training video let's see what exactly do we have over here so we will try to understand the two very important terms which will actually help you not only in your iso 27001 certification but also in your iso 27001 implementation along with uh, this will also help you in iso 27001 auditing but also not for iso 27001 but also for the other management standards if you have iso 9001 also in your organization then also these terms will be very helpful to you so that you know when you will be dealing with any kind of management standard these are two very important terms that you will be c coming across in the in the journey so now the question comes to what exactly are these two terms that i am talking about so yes your guess is right the terms that i am referring to are called preventive action and corrective action so let's see and try let's try to understand what exactly is the importance of these two terms and uh, what exactly is the importance from ISMS point of view why exactly I am focusing and re-emphasizing on the importance of these terms so the first term that we will like to discuss about is uh, corrective action so as the name suggests corrective action is nothing but kind of a reactive method to address any of the issues or any of the concerns after they have resurfaced uh, after they have surfaced so you want to understand a, a very important point over here is it's kind of a reactive method in order to address any issues or concern after that after they have surfaced it means that the problem in concern has already been identified by a process failure by an audit by a customer uh, you know reaction or by an employee or by any of the stakeholders for that matter so corrective action is nothing but reactive problem solving approach and the end goal is to fix an issue so that it does not resurface again so that is the end goal of having corrective actions in place so the way for you to completely know and understand the real reason behind why exactly the problem happened is to perform a root cause analysis uh, first in order to check the reason the real reason behind the problem why exactly it happened and then only you can understand the reason for the exact problem that that surfaced so in nutshell corrective action is nothing but an action to eliminate the cause of a detected non-conformity in and its reoccurrence which means that you are basically trying to eliminate the cause of a non-conformity which has happened and you want to make sure that it will not resurface again in the future so for corrective actions to processes to work properly you need to be careful about the following points that that i'll be discussing over here in particular so the first point is how are you identifying the problems how are you initiating the corrective actions is the second point the third point is which methods are you using for identifying the root cause analysis associated with your problems and how will you find and implement these particular solutions and the last point is how will you ensure that the solutions that you have put in place are effective enough to ensure that the problems do not resurface again so these are a few points that you have to be careful about while you are implementing the corrective actions approach so after corrective actions now let's try to understand the other side of the coin which is preventive action so now preventive action is nothing but a proactive approach so now see the shift from reactive we are coming back to proactive approach and this is initiated to stop a potential problem from resurfacing again so preventive actions focus basically focuses on the understanding of some negative patterns and some graphs some reports and some trends that you are being you know uh, trying to identify uh, to in, in order to predict and understand the real problem before it happens so this is the basic difference between corrective and preventive actions approach so preventive actions actually takes place before the ship hits the iceberg that is before the problem actually takes place for preventive actions to work you need to uh, make sure that you have some monitoring tools in place like solar winds like there are a number of monitoring tools are there so 
being proactive means that you have to be completely alert and you have to stay on top of any minor issues and handling them from becoming into real problems so you ha- you basically need some monitoring tools in place uh, it, it can be monitoring of security incidents there are a number of tools out there so you basically have to have them in place for any preventive actions to take place so once the potential issues are identified and preventive actions can be determined so they can be implemented and ev- evaluated for effectiveness as well so in nutshell preventive action is nothing but an action to eliminate the cause of a potential non conformity and its occurrence so preventive action basically requires you to conduct trend analysis in order to identify issues that may lead to non conformances and address them before they come uh, the, they become the non conformances so as we discuss some important points for corrective actions to work similarly we have some few important points for preventive actions processes to work as well so make sure that you you uh, you know make sure that you take care of these following points in particular so the first point that i'm going to discuss here is how will you understand the negative trends to find out potential problems from the data that you have available and the second point that i have is uh, how will you actually perform these preventive actions and the third point which i have is when is the best time for you to start preparing for a preventive actions and the fourth point which i have is how will you ensure that your preventive action will actually stop the ship from hitting the iceberg so these are a few points that you have to basically look after and you these are the basically uh, some some of the tips that i can give you in order to uh, reach out to the end goal and how to predict the uh, you know the problem before it occurs so corrective actions are pretty simple to understand and implement as, as they are nothing but a reactive approach to any non conformity but since i believe that some of you are still out there who are not clear about what exactly do we need to do for preventive actions so as a bonus tip i would like to give you some more preventive action examples in real examples uh, so that you can have a better understanding of this concept so as a uh, preventive action step you can always go ahead and perform periodic risk analysis and risk assessments within your environment to uncover hidden threats in your current security posture so th- this is the first step very important step that you can do in order to have a preventive actions approach so the sec- second step is what you can do is uh, in order to have a preventive action step in place you can actually set up some periodic security trainings and security awareness sessions and programs for all of your employees out there in order to continuously improve improve their skills so by this way regular security trainings will actually help you in preventive in preventing the non conformities before because of some people issues that you might be dealing with in your organization so the third important uh, point to remember over here for preventive action is along with this what you can do is you can always try to introduce new disaster recovery procedures within your organization new business continuity procedures within your organization new contingency plans within your organizations for any unpredictable situation that may happen for any hazards or any safety conditions that may occur in advance as a preventive action step so i hope that by now you are in a position to completely understand what exactly do we mean by preventive action and uh, corrective actions one more important thing to note here is that both these corrective and preventive action programs are collectively called as capa capa and these two actions are nothing but a part of overall improvement efforts that you are driving within your organization for the continual improvement process so the end goal for both these processes and action programs is to make sure that the problem and the non conformities do not resurface again and do not occur again that is the end goal for both the corrective actions as well as the preventive actions so organizations that will implement these actions can immediately realize a sudden decrease in the issues like product defects the customer complaints customer returns of products or even product recalls when high functioning uh, you know corrective and preventive actions are there and they are deployed and maintained and their effectiveness is properly managed so both of these systems should use some kind of system for as i already mentioned you have to monitor and you have to log these events and security incidents in order to identify some trends so another bonus tip that i would like to give you out here all those of you who are watching this video i'm not sure why i'm giving too many bonuses uh, at at this particular video but yeah i want to give give out some uh, another uh, bonus tip out here which is uh what exactly do we mean by a capa report i don't know whether you have heard about this term or not but a capa report is nothing but a mechanism for correcting and recording defects and non conformances that you are coming across within your business so these reports will help you in your internal audits when you can actually go back and see how many non conformances have you dealt with in the last year or in the last 5 years for that matter so 
to recap what exactly we have covered in this particular video in nutshell we have seen and we have tried to understand what exactly do we mean by corrective action what exactly do we mean by preventive actions and why does any organization needs and requires these actions in place and we have also tried to understand some brief details about the kappa reports what exactly do we mean by kappa reports so in case you are still not clear about any of these terms then please go back and watch this video once again remember that i always say repetition is the key to success and uh, so that's that's particularly it for this this particular video and if you have any more questions in terms of these things that i have discussed over here then please feel free to comment in the uh, comment section below and i will be happy to respond and please make make sure that you go through this video once again because uh, you, you will come to understand that there are some important uh, points that i have discussed in this particular video which you can already uh, recall and note down once you are actually you know uh, repeating this video so thanks for watching this is love johar if you have any questions or concerns in terms of what i have discussed over here then please feel free to comment below and i will be happy to respond back please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because as i always say iso 27001 is a very vast topic and there are tons of more videos in this pipeline that i will be uploading very soon as as i uh, learn these new concepts and uh, that is the time when I, when i want to share it with all of you as i have already mentioned so if you subscribe to my channel then you will be the first one who will be notified for these new videos So that's it for this particular training video thank you so much this is love johar thank you so much bye